Wingtip vortices are circular patterns of rotating air left behind a wing as it generates lift. One wingtip vortex trails from the tip of each wing. Wingtip vortices are sometimes named trailing or lift-induced vortices because they also occur at points other than at the wingtips. Indeed, vorticity is trailed at any point on the wing where the lift varies span-wise. It eventually rolls up into large vortices near the wingtip, at the edge of flap devices, or at other abrupt changes in wing planform. Careful selection of wing geometry, as well as of cruise conditions, are design and operational methods to minimize induced drag. Wingtip vortices form the primary component of wake turbulence. Depending on ambient atmospheric humidity as well as the geometry and wing loading of aircraft, water may condense or freeze in the core of the vortices, making the vortices visible. Generation of trailing vortices When a wing generates aerodynamic lift the air on the top surface has lower pressure relative to the bottom surface. Air flows from below the wing and out around the tip to the top of the wing in a circular fashion. An emergent circulatory flow pattern named vortex is observed featuring a low-pressure core. Three-dimensional lift and the occurrence of wingtip vortices can be approached with the concept of horseshoe vortex and described accurately with the lanchester Pran tl theory. In this view, the trailing vortex is a continuation of the wing-bound vortex inherent to the lift generation. If viewed from the tail of the airplane, looking forward in the direction of flight, there is one wing-tip vortex trailing from the left-hand wing and circulating clockwise, and another one trailing from the right-hand wing and circulating anti-clockwise. The result is a region of downwash behind the aircraft between the two vortices. The two wingtip vortices do not merge because they are circulating in opposite directions. They dissipate slowly and linger in the atmosphere long after the airplane has passed. They are a hazard to other aircraft known as wake turbulence, effects and mitigation. Wingtip vortices are associated with induced drag, an unavoidable consequence of three-dimensional lift generation. The rotary motion of the air within the shed wingtip vortices reduces the effective angle of attack of the air on the wing. The lifting line theory describes the shedding of trailing vortices as span-wise changes in lift distribution. For a given wing span and surface, minimal induced drag is obtained with an elliptical lift distribution. For a given lift distribution and surface, induced drag is reduced with increasing aspect ratio. As a consequence, aircraft for which a high lift-to-drag ratio is desirable, such as gliders or long-range airliners, typically have high aspect ratio wings. Such wings however have disadvantages with respect to structural constraints and maneuverability, as evidenced by combat and aerobatic planes which usually feature short, stubby wings despite the efficiency losses. Another method of reducing induced drag is the use of winglets, as seen on most modern airliners. Winglets increase the effective aspect ratio of the wing, changing the pattern and magnitude of the vorticity in the vortex pattern. A reduction is achieved in the kinetic energy in the circular airflow, which reduces the amount of fuel expended to perform work upon the spinning air. Visibility of vortices The cores of the vortices are sometimes visible because water present in them condenses from gas to liquid, and sometimes even freezes forming ice particles. Condensation of water vapor in wingtip vortices is most common on aircraft flying at high angles of attack, such as fighter aircraft in high-G maneuvers, or airliners taking off and landing on humid days. Aerodynamic condensation and freezing the cores of vortices spin at very high speed and the regions are very low pressure. To first approximation, these low pressure regions form with little exchange of heat with the neighboring regions. So the local temperature in the low pressure regions drops, too. If it drops below the local dew point, there results a condensation of water vapor present in the cores of wingtip vortices, making them visible. The temperature may even drop below the local freezing point, in which case ice crystals will form inside the cores. 
the phase of water is determined by its temperature and pressure. For example, in the case of liquid gas transition, at each pressure there is a special transition temperature, such that if the sample temperature is even a little above, the sample will be a gas. But, if the sample temperature is even a little below, the sample will be a liquid. See phase transition. For example, at the standard atmospheric pressure, is 100 degrees Celsius equals 212 degrees Fahrenheit. The transition temperature decreases with decreasing pressure. In the case of water vapor in air, the corresponding to the partial pressure of water vapor is called the dew point. Vortex cores are regions of low pressure. As a vortex core begins to form, the water in the air is in vapor phase, which means that the local temperature is above the local dew point. After the vortex core forms, the pressure inside it has decreased from the ambient value, and so the local dew point is not the only property that is dropping. The vortex core temperature is dropping also, and in fact it can drop by much more than the dew point does, as we now explain. Here we follow the discussion in REF. To first approximation, the formation of vortex causes thermodynamically an adiabatic process, i.e., one with no exchange of heat. In such a process, the drop in pressure is accompanied by a drop in temperature. According to the equation here are the absolute temperature and pressure at the beginning of the process, and are the absolute temperature and pressure in the vortex core, and the constant is about 7 fifths equals 1.4 for air. Thus, even though the local dew point inside the vortex cores is even lower than in the ambient air, the water vapor may nevertheless condense if the formation of the vortex brings the local temperature below the new local dew point. Let's verify that this can indeed happen under realistic conditions. For a typical transport aircraft landing at an airport, these conditions are as follows. We may take and to have values corresponding to the so-called standard conditions, i.e., equals 1 atmosphere equals 1013.25 MBE equals 101,325 pascals and equals 293.15 K. We will take the relative humidity to be a comfortable 35%. This corresponds to a partial pressure of water vapor of 820 pascals equals 8.2 MB. We will assume that in a vortex core, the pressure to about 650 pascals equals 6.5 MB. According to a dew point calculator at this site, that partial pressure results in the local dew point of about 0.86 degrees Celsius. In other words, the new local dew point is about equal to the new local temperature. Therefore, the case we have been considering is a marginal case. If the relative humidity of the ambient air were even a bit higher, then the local dew point inside the vortices would rise, while the local temperature would remain the same as what we have just found. Thus, the local temperature would now be lower than the local dew point, and so the water vapor inside the vortices would indeed condense. Under right conditions, the local temperature in vortex cores may drop below the local freezing point, in which case ice particles will form inside the vortex cores. We have just seen that the water vapor condensation mechanism in wingtip vortices is driven by local changes in air pressure and temperature. This is to be contrasted to what happens in another well-known case of water condensation related to airplanes the contrails from airplane engine exhausts. In the case of contrails, the local air pressure and temperature do not change significantly. What matters instead is that the exhaust contains both water vapor as well as aerosols. Formation flight. Migratory birds take advantage of each other's wingtip vortices by flying in a V formation so that all but the leader are flying in the upwash from the wing of the bird ahead. This upwash makes it easier for the bird to support its own weight, reducing fatigue on migration flights. Hazards Wingtip vortices can pose a hazard to aircraft, especially during the landing and takeoff phases of flight. 
The intensity or strength of the vortex is a function of aircraft size, speed, and configuration. The strongest vortices are produced by heavy aircraft flying slowly, with wing flaps and landing gear retracted. Large jet aircraft can generate vortices that can persist for many minutes, drifting with the wind. The hazardous aspects of wingtip vortices are most often discussed in the context of wake turbulence. If a light aircraft is immediately preceded by a heavy aircraft, wake turbulence from the heavy aircraft can roll the light aircraft faster than can be resisted by use of ailerons. At low altitudes, in particular during takeoff and landing, this can lead to an upset from which recovery is not possible. Air traffic controllers attempt to ensure an adequate separation between departing and arriving aircraft by issuing wake turbulence warnings to pilots, gallery, and each six prowler with condensation in the cores of its wingtip vortices and also on the top of its wings. The core of the vortex trailing from the tip of the flap of a commercial airplane with landing flap extended. Wingtip vortices from a Cessna 182 wind tunnel model. Wingtip vortices shown in flare smoke left behind a C-17 Globemaster III, also known as Smoke Angels. The MV-22 Osprey tilt rotor has a high disc loading, producing visible blade tip vortices. Euler computation of a steady tip vortex, contour colors and ISO surface reveal vorticity. A Boeing 747 model has just passed through a stationary sheet of smoke, which is showing its trailing vortices. At the vortex facility at the Langley Research Center, 